Hi guys, I'm Shmi, hello, and welcome back to the channel where good news, the new bucket seats have been installed in my AMG GTR Roadster, and today I'm gonna to take it straight out for a lap or two on the Nürburgring. We are, of course, here at Opus on a very nice afternoon at the Nürburgring, but it is actually forecast to be thunderstorming later on. Fingers crossed I can get some laps in before the weather turns nasty. I want to show you how the seats are looking though and answer some of your questions. If you asked about why I changed from the more comfortable AMG performance seats, more comfortable in theory, to the bucket seats that we've now installed and a bit more about the process because it is a lot more complicated than initially meets the eye. So let's have a look then at how this has turned out before getting out for some laps at the Green Hell. Despite being just a little bit dirty from many miles out on the road, the Hyacinth Red on the GTR Roadster is looking awesome. And the car is in some pretty good company here with an AMG GTR Pro, BMW M2 CS, my Porsche 718 Cayman GT4 sandwiched in the middle, and many a GT3 and RS across the road over at Manti, including the GT2 RS MRs and the 992 GT3s. But I want to talk about these new seats. Installing them in the GTR Roadster was a decision that I think I had probably made before I had even a officially ordered the car to begin with. There is something infinitely cool about bucket seats in a convertible. The same configuration I have in my McLaren 675LT Spider, but I think probably the only official factory Mercedes-Benz car to ever have a folding convertible roof with bucket seats was probably the CLK DTM convertible, which is one of the coolest cars they have ever made. So let's come and take a look at these then. I need to grab the key from my pocket to open up the roof so we can take a proper look at this. We've got the noises of all of the mechanics workshops around us but basically a triple press on the button press and hold it and the roof will fold on open and you can see how good these new seats look they fit perfectly they are the factory bucket seat just as you would find in the gtr coupe the gtr pro and also of course in my sls black series as well and finished to match the interior of this car the same black leather and dynamica the same yellow stitch and embroidery as we have everywhere else the cross stitch on the steering wheel around the dashboard for example and with the factory yellow seat belts i had for this too all of the yellow touches tying in with the yellow calipers on the bricks to contrast against the main red of the body color but these look the part to be honest it feels like they should have been factory they fit perfectly these are in the default position you have three different heights all sorts of things you can adjust but they've been fitted with a lot of work to get over the complications around the ecus now i described this a little bit it's not just a case of taking out the old performance seats which we'll go and check out inside in a moment and then putting these in the computers control a lot of this because effectively the electronic steering column for this is controlled through the driver's seats ECU. If you take out the driver's seats ECU, you can then never move that again, which of course would be far from ideal. The result of that is having to rebuild all of this back up and another touch as well, the side bracket down here that you have, typically from factory, is actually only in silver. There's no other silver really here. So the guys at Opus decided to powder coat those black and they look so much better as a result. So big thanks to them for doing that as well. But effectively, we also have the heated seats. The filaments have been installed and operate from the main button in the center. The only buttons I lose are the air scarf, but I don't care about the air scarf. I never used it once in the 5,000 or so miles I'd done with this car before, so absolutely nothing lost there in the slightest. I should probably take a seat inside though, in the bucket seats that I'm very familiar with from my various other AMGs it just feels good you sit a touch lower but it feels so how it should be in this car they look the part and actually one thing i want to show you as well if i just climb out for a second if i close it back up the way that everything just fits together perfectly in fact just do this let's lock it do the reverse of the process to close it up you see these flaps they come exactly to the same position as they did with the original performance seats and that whole mechanism does its thing and it all slides back into place. Unlock it again. Inside here, all fits as it should. I'm a big fan of this, especially the AMG embroideries. Now I want to go and show the performance seats inside very quickly, because as I said, quite a few people questioned why I had taken out what would normally be considered to be the more comfortable seats to replace them with these. And seats, as I've said, are quite a personal thing to me 
these are way more comfortable. Down here then, we have the original seats plus another of the seat frames. So these are the seats that came with my car, the AMG performance seats, the upgrade seat that you actually get in a lot of the different AMG models. They come with the diamond style quilting through the center. They do have heating and cooled seats, as well as, as I mentioned, the air scarf up top. They are massively heavier and we weighed them and they, with the full brackets and everything mounted up, came in at 27 kilos a seat. When we then popped the new bucket seats onto the scales as well, they they came in at 8.7 and I said they were going to be about 12 kilos including the seat frames. This is an example of the standard seat frame with the regular silver that you'd have for that side bracket. They weigh 3.3, 8.7 plus 3.3, exactly 12, 15 kilos a seat lighter by taking these out and swapping them to, in my mind, the more comfortable buckets. And that is because these are very, very firm and the backrest is just not a good shape for me personally. Now, like I said, this makes a big difference who you are, your size, how tall you are, how wide your shoulders are, how wide your hips are. Seats are a very personal thing, but these for me on a long distance run have just never really been all that comfortable. Hence why I was keen to change them up for the bucket seats that I knew I would like an awful lot. And at some point I'm gonna get those back to my garage at home and maybe build them into some chairs or into maybe a frame that sits them side by side to make into a, a mini two seat kind of thing. We'll have to see how that goes. For now, they'll stay in the hands of Opus, but basically that's why I was keen to change them. Let's go for a little drive then. And that's the other thing we now have is the exhaust valve switch that Opus installed. So independently of which driving mode I'm in, I can press the button on the switch and change it further. I do need to go and get a full tank of fuel before we head out. So in race mode, with that open, yeah, it's valves open all the way through and you can set that to the default or however you would like to have it. Now we can do some laps with the roof down, which is quite nice as well. So let's drive, actually press the button, go into individual. Let's go out and this will obviously be quite a familiar driving experience to driving in the Pro, the Coupe and the SLS in many ways because they are all effectively the same seats and even my two McLarens are basically molded on the same seat. That was a Lizard Green 901.2 GT3 RS Visac. Right, just gonna get my brain in gear. Where exactly are we going? Out here, in the bucket seats. It might seem like a small thing, but it makes such a big difference. It just feels like this fits the car. This is what this car was supposed to have. Being a touch lower feels really cool as well with the roof open. Yes. I'm excited right now to take this for a lap because if you remember, the only previous laps I did with this car were back in May when unfortunately we had the issue with the Active Aero front spoiler. So at the front of the car, there is effectively a piece of rubber that gets pushed down by some motors, depending how you're driving at what speed you're going to give the car more stability. Unfortunately, that part had failed and the result of that was a top speed limit, which in normal instances would not be a problem, but it limited me to 200 kilometers per hour or 124 miles per hour, which on the Nürburgring meant that approximately 10 times or so during the lap, unfortunately, the car reached its top speed, which was kind of frustrating. Well, today we will not have that problem. We will be able to enjoy it all. And hopefully it looks like it's gonna stay dry enough, at least if I get out early on this evening's Touristen Farten session to go enjoy. It's not looking particularly busy this evening, which is a good thing. We have Touristen Farten, tourist drives. That means it is a public toll road. Road rules do apply, overtaking on the left. Have to take it sensibly, but we can head on out. I've got my laps loaded on the card. Lip this, barrier opens get ready to go. I can spot a bike up ahead. Now for the drive, I'm going to pop this car into race mode. We'll go into race. One more turn. There we go. Into race. We will go into manual on the gears. We'll keep everything else as it is more or less and uh, get ready to head on out to the famous green hell. I think the third lap I will have now done in this car. Here we go then. RS6 in my mirrors. Gosh, it gets windy with the roof down. I've got to apologize for the noise. Gosh, this is cool being here with the roof down. Having done my last laps in the Cayman GT4, 
It's good to be back in a GTR, having done a lot of laps between my original GTR and the GTR Pro, and of course a few with this. Now I didn't say last time, this corner in front of us here has been renamed in honor of the Queen of the Ring, Sabine Schmidt's curve. Sadly, she passed away recently, but what a tribute as we now go out onto the Nodge Life of Proper, Pats and back. I love this car. And it is basically empty tarmac today. This is fantastic. silent with a bit of concentration. Gosh, it's easy to forget how fast you go here. That was 225 kilometers an hour. And now we go through the fast section to finish Raiden Kreutz. So 250 k's with the roof down. Off camber through here. Arenborg. This thing is so fast. It's quite easy to forget. It really enables you to push on. It's much easier to drive this car fast than the GT4. The comparison is actually incredible between the two of them as to how much difference it makes. Through that compression, some more dab of the brakes over the curb to add an hour forced. GT3 RS ahead. In towards the siphon. This car is so fast, honestly, it's silly. Go up the hill then, foot flat. And this is where being in a uh, very powerful car obviously helps. It's funny the brain re recalibration, even between GT4 and GTR Roadster, because of how much quicker it is into every corner. Through bag work, use all the track on the exit. I feel like I've caught up with some of the cars that are out here. Just watching out as we go around through on the inside. Building up the speed again. which this car is carrying me around the Nordschleife is really and truly making me have to slow down and think just a little bit. I'm actually amazed how much quicker I arrive at each section in the GTR Roadster than in the GT4. I mean, it makes sense. Obviously the GT4 would probably be able to carry, well, would be able to carry more speed through corners than I carried with it. <laughs> Three weapon then. This is just so easy to drive ludicrously fast. One of the most incredible things is the closing speed to other cars here. It is pretty mad in this thing. Now we come to Little Carousel, and this is where, given the brakes are certainly having a workout, I think we go a little bit more easily around towards the end. Oh, we got the tyre temps up there nicely. <laughs> and I tell you what, the seats are fabulous. The seats are absolutely perfect for this. That was an awesome lap. That was so much fun. That was really, really cool. 
<laughs> this car is so me. I cannot wait to bring the Black Series here. I can't wait to do some Nordschleife laps in the AMG GT Black Series because I know right now it's going to be out of this world if that's how good this car is as we now coast on back. <laughs> Uh, I kind of want to do another one immediately, but we need to go and let some air out of the tires and um, yeah, take it a little bit more easily. <laughs> the other cool thing is that the Nürburgring car park is now open here at Devil's Diner at the entrance to Touristenfahrten, and there are lots of nice cars around. It really isn't very busy this evening, that is great, but obviously with the forecast saying it was going to be atrocious, I suppose a lot of people who might have come along have probably chosen to stay away. The question is, am I going to get another lap in by the time I've done the tyres? We shall see. Tyre pressures have been lowered then, back around. It's still seeming very, very quiet. A Focus RS has gone out in front. This is the perfect time to drive here, to be honest. Just to enjoy it, to take a little bit more time to take it in, to enjoy the ride. It's now closed for bikes, so just cars out on the Nordschleife. There's another beast of the green hell behind me. Anyway, out we go. Got the motor information up on the dashboard at the moment. We are still in race, we are still in manual. Rides over that bump actually quite nicely. So go through the chicane here. Get ready to put the foot down for lap two. They're not as crisp as the cars before the OPFs were installed. But they still sound like a deep grumbly V8, which is what AMG is so famous for. As we come back to Sabine Schmidt's curve and into Hudson Back. possible to squeeze on through. Ready for the very, very fast stretch down here. Two hundred and sixty kilometers an hour <laughs> roof down, over 160 miles an hour. That's um, pretty blustery in a convertible. Not gonna lie. <laughs> feeling the wind is starting to pop as well from the pressure and all the elevation changes. Is that a Range Rover in front of me? Somebody's doing a lap of the Nordschleife in a Range Rover, although saying that I did a lap in my G63, which is probably even less suited. I guess it is at least an AMG, albeit a, a G-Wagon. Up from Switzerland to the ring and a lap in a Range Rover. <laughs> Kudos to them. <laughs> I love it. You get all sorts of vehicles going around here, driving around here in this car. If you couldn't tell, I absolutely love it. Bit of concentration. My second lap in the AMG GTR Roadster for today and I apologize if it has been extraordinarily windy I've done my best with the microphone but hey I'm learning I'm trying to work out what's what's possible and what isn't we're doing laps of the Nordschleife roof down in the bucket seats could not have been a better way to end today to be honest to go out for some fun we'll use some engine braking and I'm gonna go for a cool down kind of loop drive around as well sometimes at the end on a busy day you have a little bit of a traffic jam here and obviously if you've been going for it in a car like this which is not particularly light and I don't have the carbon ceramics in the UK 
These were all pre-configured. The Roadsters all have steel brakes. You couldn't have it any other way. My Pro had carbon ceramics. The Black Series had carbon ceramics. My original GTR had the steels as well. And they weren't really up to the task, especially after the modifications, which were carried out at Opus on that car. We call back through the car park at the end of a pretty awesome outing, if I can say so myself. GT3 Tourings, all sorts of 911s and E30s, E36s, E46s and other different BMWs and Porsches and AMGs and you name it, everything here at the Nürburgring. Actually, let's go this way to go chill. But yeah, needless to say, I am pretty happy with the result of this. These new seats have just transformed this car for me because while driving on tarmac like this is super smooth and gentle and lovely, and that's where the AMG performance seats you don't really get too affected by. If you're doing a long drive and it includes some bumpy roads, believe me, the AMG performance seats are not the best, particularly for me. These seats I could sleep in, I could be in for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and never be uncomfortable in the slightest, which is why for me this was an absolute must change. It's how cool they are, saving some weight and being more comfortable in the process. And I don't care if I lose the air scarf because I don't use it anyway. And they just look awesome. So a big thanks to the guys at Opus, to Lucas and the team there for getting all of this set up, for doing all of the electronics and wizardry required. And of course that can also be done for US customers, for example, who have GT Black Series or GTR Pros and Coupes, which all have the comfort seats. You can't get them with these seats at all. Well, now you know you can do the upgrade. If you're interested in it, you know who to speak to. For now though, thank you very much for watching. As always, guys, thank you for joining my Nürburgring laps this evening. That is it for this time, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.